somebody like to open us up in prayer? Brother Jonathan? service today, God, pray you touch the hearts and minds of every person here, and Lord, have a great effect in our lives, and God, we thank you, we give you all the glory and praise, God, in Jesus' holy name, amen. I've been thinking just like, we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff go on since we started this work over here, and I was thinking just, just as well as we've had a lot of uh, stuff that's been negative, we've had a lot of positive, too. Just this past week, uh, some things that we, we were thinking was uh, going to be hurt near impossible, the Lord turned around and made it possible. We thought we was going to have to pay a good little bit to get the gas on, and when I, Donya said it was just amazing to her because she done talked to somebody several times, and they told her it was going to be $440, I believe is what she said. And then when I called, the guy said, no deposit. So she said, well, I don't know what happened. I said, well, sometimes it's all in who you talk to. And I was talking to the Lord while he had me on hold. So, you know. uh, so no deposit. And then uh, what else was it? The power bill? Uh, everything worked out. Everything just worked out. The insurance. Just the insurance. We thought we were going to pay the big deposit. Get new insurance. They just switched it from the other name to our name. I mean, just amazing stuff that, you know, we were thinking – was going to have a lot of extra funds to go into that, and we didn't have to. So that's just a blessing. God is good. Okay, we're done now. Ain't no prayer. Y'all bet us. Can you, you want to play that sound, Mike?
all that, this song kept coming to me, so I just jotted it down in the car while I was at work. And so I thought, well, maybe we should sing that this week. God is doing great things. Hallelujah. God is doing great things.
Yes, Lord.
pastor during the life, I you know one thing Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Yes. Oh, I'll never sick. Take you. Yes. But I will. I mean, oh, he will go with us all the way. Hey. Even to the ends of the world. Don't you stick your hand up and say, Lord, I'm thankful. Really. This thankful, Lord. This thing's deeper than just words from our lips. Yes. Yes. This thing, this, this relationship with God, it's deeper than just an expression from our lips. Yes. There's a place that God said, I'll go with you. Always, even into the ends of the world, I mean, he'll go with us. Amen. Amen. And so the greatest friend uh, I could ever have in this world, in this life, is Jesus. Yes. Amen. Aren't you glad that he's made himself available? Amen. Amen. Ain't nothing that we've done. Uh, matter of fact, we're not even worth the things that he has done for us. Amen. But I'm so glad that he's done them. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning that he's, he's made a way where there seemed not to be a way? Uh, if you got your Bible, I want to read just a little bit this morning or this afternoon. Uh, out of Ephesians, the second chapter, we'll read it for a few verses here. Uh, I'll talk to you for just a minute or two about it. I'll give you just a minute to get there. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, we'll start in verse 19. I mean, how many is glad you got a, a church you can come to on a Sunday and lift up the name of the Lord? Amen. I'm glad to give Jesus a great cheer this morning. Yes. Bible says, Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I mean, no, we don't need a different foundation. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. How I many want to be a habitation for God? Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. Uh, I want to be a place that God can dwell in. Amen. I mean, uh, God, all through the Bible, I love the Bible. <clears throat> I've been uh, reading a lot of the Old Testament, but I'll be honest with you, I have to put some New Testament in there with it. Sometimes the Old Testament's rough. But it really is. It's got some rough parts. I've been reading. I've been reading in the Bible, uh, starting back in the Old Testament. Been doing just, just really trying to do a lot of reading, trying to read the Bible through. And uh, I, I found out that uh, God has reasons and ways that uh, for everything that He does, Sister Rose. God doesn't just throw things out there. Uh, he's got reasons. He's got orders. He's got ways. Uh, he's got uh, reasons for doing or for saying of uh, the things that He's done and the things that He's said. Uh, he, he took Moses up. The Bible says that Moses went up to the mountain of God, and for 40 days and 40 nights he didn't eat bread, didn't drink water, but he was in the presence of Almighty God, and he received uh, a lot of instructions. Moses received a lot of instructions up there, and what he did is what God was doing was God was telling Moses how to create a place that his presence could come and dwell in, because God knew that uh, uh, Moses wasn't enough for the people. I mean, no, it's not. It's not enough to have a have a preacher. Uh, it's not enough to have things. It's not enough to have a church. Uh, we have to have the presence of God. I mean, Amen. No, that's the truth. Amen. And so God, God understood this. That it's that we're we're not going to be able to make it through this life by our own means, or our own ability. You're not going to be able to do it. Uh, there's going to be mountains that you can't cross. There's going to be battles that you can't overcome. Uh, there's going to be circumstances that you can't see past or that you can't get through. Uh, by yourself, and so we're going to need the Lord. How many know this yes, morning? But if Brother Jack, we're going to need the Lord. Yes. Uh, there's opposition that I don't have the answer to. There's, there's circumstances that I can't see ways around by myself. But I know this much. I've never found one with Jesus that's too big. Amen. How many know that's the truth? I've never mm -hmm. seen an obstacle too big with God that I can't overcome and that I can't get around. Amen. And so that's what God was doing. Uh, he took Moses up into the up to the mountain. He began to give him instructions. And he began to tell him, he said, look, Moses, you're going you're gonna to gather offerings from the people. The people are going to begin to bring you these things. And he told them the things that he needed. You know, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a move going through this land. It's whatever I want to give God. That will cause a move. Now, Sister Rose, it ain't that way. God's got things that he wants. God's got ways that he, yes. that he uh, uh, declares. And to enter into that place of worship, how many know we have to go his way? Give his things and do it his way. Amen. That's the only way. 
uh, everything else is vanity. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastes says it's a vanity of vanity. Anything that I want to offer that's away from God's way, it ain't going to move the heart of God. But Brother Jack, if I'm going to get to God's way and go to offering up the things that he desires and the things that he wants, then uh, what, what it does is this. Moses gets these instructions. He begins to gather all the things from the people. People begin to bring wood. They begin to bring gold. They begin to bring precious stones. Uh, they begin to bring silver and brass. There's all kinds of things. And then uh, uh, God begins to have craftsmen that begins to build things according to the pattern uh, that he showed Moses on the mountain. He built an ark out of shot and wood, which was certain uh, depth, certain width, a certain breadth. And, and what they would do, uh, you know, when they would bring that tree, they'd bring the wood. Uh, it was a gnarly, very gnarly, uh, really an ugly wood, to be honest with you. Uh, when you looked at it on the outside, it was just, it had knots all over it, uh, a very rough uh, exterior. It was, it was just in rough shape. But what they would do is they'd remove all the bark. They'd remove all the exterior off of it. And what it revealed was a very beautiful wood that was down on the inside. Well, I don't know about you. I feel like that sometimes. I feel like there's a lot of times, Sister Rose, I've got a lot of knots. But Brother Jack, I've got bar all over me. And it ain't always the best thing. But, buddy, I believe what God's doing is beginning to strip us. How I many say, God strip me, Lord? Strip Lord, begin to take all that stuff off of me. And what you'll find is there's something down on the inside that, buddy, that God can work with. Amen. All we have to do is offer it up. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then he tells them to take gold. Uh, it's not, and, and, and God, God doesn't do things without direction. He tells them to take gold for a reason. Uh, gold is not found just anywhere. You have to really look for gold. Uh, gold's hidden within the heart of the earth. Uh, you have to excavate. You have to get by a river, find a river that's coming and bringing gold out of the ground. And so gold represents something that's on the inside. And so what they would do is take the gold that was on the inside and they would cover the trees and all the things uh, uh, that was on the outside. They'd cover them with that gold. And so the message to me is, there's something within me. I mean, oh, I've got the Holy Ghost. I don't know if you got the Holy Ghost this morning. But if you got the Holy Ghost, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, go to seeking God until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Because that which is within, I mean, oh, that which is within is the Holy Ghost. It has to cover that which is without. Because God has to have a place that he can habitate. Amen. He's looking for a habitation. Somewhere that he can dwell, brother. Amen. And he, and he can't just dwell anywhere. He's got specific directions and specific instructions. And so he's given all this stuff to Moses for a reason. And Moses gets the people to work it. They do everything God's way. They go God's instruction. They get it right out of the Bible, or right out of the law that Moses uh, had begun to declare. It was a spoken thing at that time. And Moses began to declare, this is what you got to do. You've got to build it by this way. You have to build it by these dimensions. You've got to rear the tabernacle up this way. It's got to have this many buckles and patches and this, this kind of designs and de decorations and all these things. And it seemed like a lot of work. But the truth is, right now, around the throne of God, they're crying, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> but you can believe that right now. They're around the throne of God crying, holy, holy, holy. And so the place where God dwells, it has to be a holy habitation. How many know that's the truth this morning? And so what God was doing was giving Moses instruction to build something in their day and in their natural that could house his presence. And that's exactly what he did. And the Bible says in Exodus that when the work was finished, in other words, when they got everything God's way, when they got everything line upon line, precept upon precept, according to the word that Moses was giving them, then the Bible says that the work was finished and the presence of God set down over the tabernacle. Well, what does that mean? Well, when the presence of God set down over the tabernacle, Brother Jack, everywhere they went, guess what happened? The presence of God was with them. He was leading them and guiding them into all the places that they needed to go. And when they got there, guess what? Did the, the nations rise against them? Yes, they did. But, buddy, when they were going God's way, there wasn't the devil in hell big enough. There wasn't the nation big enough in Canaan land. There wasn't the nation big enough on this side of Jordan or on that side of Jordan that could stand in the presence of Israel. 
they'd march right over every one of them and conquer every devil, every Amen. nation, every That's battle. Right. Whatever rose up against them, they'd be there victorious. Why? Because, not because who they were, not because what their name was. It was because they had built something that the presence of God would inhabit. Amen. And so what the key to this thing is, it ain't in what your name is. It ain't in what you fellowship with. It ain't in what's over your church door. The key to this thing is, is can I house the presence of Almighty God? Well, how do I do that? I've got to go back the same way. And God has done this, brother. It ain't by an accident. It's not by mistake. He's given me very specific instructions. Amen. And it's called the Word of God. Amen. And in that Word of God, brother, you know what I find? I find God's ways. I find the things that God likes. I find things that God dislikes. And what I do is, uh, the first thing we do, we all know this, we come to God one way. And that's with repentance. Yeah. There ain't no other way to God other than repentance. Amen. But when I'll repent, amen, let me know if I'll repent and ask God to forgive me of my sins and wash me in his precious blood and cover me, the Bible says he'll, that crimson river, let me know that crimson river of, of the blood of Jesus, Brother Cain, will wash out all the sin of my life. It'll wash out all the impurities of my life. And, buddy, my spirit will be clean. Amen. It'll be clean. Amen. And then he'll fill me with the Holy Ghost. Let me know uh, it's not a very popular message anymore to seek God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's right. But how many know it's still a necessity? Yes, it is. Amen. The church Amen. needs the Holy Ghost. The church needs the fire of God operating inside the house of God. And so we seek God, Brother Jack, until we're filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. And once we're filled with the Holy Ghost, now we've got a voice that lives within us. That the Bible said, he'll, he'll just make me shout. That ain't what all the Holy Ghost is for, is to make you shout. That's right. That's what this modern day Holy Ghost is. It's just a shout. The buddy, the Holy Ghost is, is there to lead you into all truth. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, he'll lead you into all truth. And so when I get the Holy Ghost, what I get is I get a voice that lives down on the inside of me that leads and guides me into all truth. Amen. Amen. What is truth? Truth is Jesus. Hallelujah. How many know that Bible is truth? Every, every word in that Bible is right. Every word in that Bible is true. Every word in that Bible will stand when everything else passes away. So, buddy, I'm a firm believer that this word of God is truth. Amen. Amen. And what the Holy Ghost will do, he'll lead me into it. Amen. He'll lead me into that word of God. Well, what happens then? What happens, sister? i got to move your guitar for just a minute. It's fine. I won't break it. I promise. I'm just going to get recorded. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He leads me into all truth for a reason. What God's doing is no different in our day than what he done in Moses' day. God's looking for a people that he can dwell in the midst of. I mean, no, God still wants relationships. Yes. It ain't changed none. God wants a relationship with each and every one of us. God don't want to just hear from me on Sunday. He wants to hear from me on Monday. He wants me to talk to him on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays and Saturdays. God desires a relationship with his children. And what he's doing is... Uh, uh, he, 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 we're needing to uh, create a place that God can inhabit. And God can't dwell in just anything. How I many know that's the truth? That's God's, right. looking, uh, uh, God's looking for a people that he can dwell in the midst of. Right. Well, what, uh, uh, why do we do the things? I've asked myself this question lately. And the question is this. Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? What is my focus and what is my vision? You know, for years the church has went with no vision. And no direction and no focus and no understanding of, uh, of why we're doing the things that we're doing. Well, I, I, I'm beginning to try to figure it all out. I, I, I believe, uh, and I know the reason that I'm trying to do the things that I'm doing, and, it, and it's this. I've got to have Jesus with me. Yes. I've got to have his presence in my life. Yes. Because there's things that I can't overcome by myself. Amen. There's obstacles that I cannot defeat. Uh, uh, there, there's things in life. I mean, no, life has obstacles. Life has sicknesses. Uh, life has struggles. Life has all kinds of things. And there's, there, there's places that my hands are tied. I, there ain't nothing I can do. There's nothing I can, I can do to get around it. There ain't nothing I can do to, to get over it. There's nothing I can do. But, I mean, no, if, if I've got Jesus, there's no, uh, what that means is, whatever obstacle I come against, 
It doesn't matter on this side or on that side. I'm an overcome. Hallelujah. Right. If I lay down on this side, guess what? I've just gained heaven. I've just, I've just reaped a reward. Ain't a devil can separate me. Ain't nothing. And so that's why it's important to live according to this word of God. Without it, without a lifestyle according to the word of God, there will be no habitation of the presence of God. Amen. But buddy, when we get it right, how many know it's worth getting right? It's worth seeking God. It's worth praying. It's it's worth fasting. It's worth reading my Bible. It's worth getting on my knees in prayer and asking God to lead me and guide me into all truth. Why? Because there's going to come a day that I'm going to have to stand and he'll stand with me. Amen. Amen. I won't be fighting it by myself. I won't be as one that's beating the air. I won't be in this battle all alone. But buddy, I'll have the conqueror with me. It doesn't matter how big my obstacle or my opposition. If I'll create a habitation, Brother Jack, then there's no place I'll wander that God won't go with me. Hallelujah. That's if right. I'll create a habitation, there ain't a place I'll rise up with an enemy that'll overcome me. Oh, no, it won't. I'll rise above it with power, with authority, with integrity, because I'll be walking with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But, buddy, how many know I've got to go His way? I've got to build it His way. I've got to create it the way that He said created, or God will not inhabit it. Amen. He won't inhabit any form of worship. He won't and have it any form of praise. Real worship is truth before God. Amen. Amen. I mean, no, that's real worship. Amen. That's real worship. Real worship is when I lay down my will. Uh, I, I was talking to my church the other day. And there's a there's a thing going through the land that worship is this. And singing and praising God. Because it moves something. It can move flesh. It can move anything. That ain't real worship. Real worship is how you are tomorrow. Hallelujah. Real worship's in the midst of your adversity are you lifted up the name of Jesus. Real worship is undefiled before God. Real worship is true. Real worship is your action. Real worship is your walk. Real worship is living according to God's word. Real worship is giving God your all and magnifying his name no matter what comes against you. That's real worship. And what that'll do is it'll create a habitation that God's presence can dwell in. And when you go calling on the name of the Lord, he goes to fighting your battles and moving your enemies out. He goes to making ways where there seem to be no way. Why are we doing this? I'll tell you why we're doing it. Because we're creating a habitation and almighty God can dwell in the midst of and fight all our battles and move all our enemies and bring us out another way. Lord, they, they might come in 10,000 on one side. Lord, 50 or 100 on the next side, but you'll march right on out wide because you've got a presence with you and a go before you and devour all of your enemies and make ways where there seem to be no way. That's why we do what we do. Hallelujah. That's why we live the way that we live. That's why we want to get it right. Amen. Yes, that's that's right. why we want a real relationship with God. If it ain't real, it won't move God. If it ain't right, it won't bring the presence. But buddy, if it's right and it's real, it'll bring the presence of heaven and the host with him. And you'll conquer it or devil. You'll never fight. You'll have a you'll have a way in the midst where there seem to be no way. That's the truth, buddy. Amen, bro. That is the truth. God will make ways where there seem to be no way. So that's why we do the things we do. Yeah. That's why we pray. I mean, no, a lifestyle with no prayer, it ain't going to get you very far with God. There has to be communication in your relationship with God. There's, 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 there's two or three things that are very necessary. Prayer is one of them. You have to have a relationship with God. I know you know that. I'm not preaching something you don't know. Uh, I just, what do they say when you come through? You just reiterate some things. That's all. Just bring them back to remembrance. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I do it to my church all the time because uh, every service I mention, pray and read your Bible because that's the keys to success. Repent from whatever's wrong in your life. That's what brings the move of God is to real, really repent. Here's uh, one of the greatest men in the Bible. His name's John the Baptist. He had one message. Yeah. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yes. There's one coming after me who's preferred before me, whose shoes latches I'm not even worthy to, to unloose. Yes. The same come baptizing you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Yes. But his message was repent because there's something coming after me. Yes. Well, buddy, I'm telling you today, there's something coming. 
I can hear the voice of John running through this country right now. It's the same spirit. I can hear preachers. I see preachers all over. You know what their message is? Repent. Repent. Get it right. You know why? Because he's going to move again. But guess what he has to move in? He has to move in righteousness and holiness. That's right. God can't move where there's no holiness. God can't move when things, when, where things aren't right. And so he's trying to prepare his bride. I believe he's try, trying to prepare the body of Christ for a great move of God that's just down the road. And the message is repent. Uh, I don't mean that we're lost and we got things that we're lost and in trouble, but it does mean to get things in order and try to find that place that the presence of God can move in and have his way in my life. But I believe we're on the brinks of the greatest revival that this country has ever seen. Sister Rose, I believe that. Uh, Brother Jack, I don't think we're going to go out of here defeated. I don't think we're going to go out of here beat down and in trouble. I think we're going to come out of here victorious because I believe the Bible says in Joel that the, uh, uh, the latter house will be greater. He said he'll give us the former and the latter rain together in the first smoke. That's talking about our day. Amen. I mean, we're living in the last day. It's talking about our day. And so there is something coming that's going to be greater than we've ever seen. The Bible says I hadn't seen it, ear hadn't heard it, they entered in the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And so there's something great coming. But buddy, right before that move comes, you'll see the church. She'll repent. Hallelujah. Just like it did in John's day. What came behind John? Jesus. Hallelujah. What's coming in our day? Another move of Jesus. Yes, it is. And it'll come the same way. It's going to come with holiness. It's going to come with getting things right with God. But buddy, when it comes, it's going to shake this world. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. That encourages me. I want to get it right. Hallelujah. To God. I want to have a habitation. I want to have a lifestyle that the presence of Almighty God can flow through and that He'll move for me. He'll fight my battles. He'll make ways where there seem to be no way. But if we ain't fighting as one beat in the air, we're not in vain in this thing. We've got reason. Hallelujah. I'm looking for a habitation of the Most High, not of something a man can give me, not of something that a status can give me that ain't going to work for me. I've got to have Jesus. Hallelujah. I wish you'd lift your hand today and say, Lord, I've got to have you. Help me to find that way. Help me to find that place where I can have your habitation in my life. Yes. Yes. It's going to carry you when nothing else will. It'll carry you when nothing else can. Amen. Have in a place where God can dwell. That's right, brother. It just shows you in the Old Testament, it can't be anyway. You know, just anyway. Cain had a worship. He had a form of worship. But it didn't move God. But we got to get it. This is real worship. Amen. How many know this is real worship? Amen. That's right, brother. And buddy, I believe we're getting it right. Yes. I believe we're getting it right. That's why God's blessing you. That's why God's moving in your life. God moves in your life when you're in His way. When you're in His way. And buddy, it, it, it ain't a. It ain't a. Uh, it, it's a. This last days, of course, it's going to be a body move. But how many know? Unity is made up of unity, which means one. It's made up of one. And so it doesn't matter about what everybody else is doing if I'm doing it. And so it starts with one person. Every person, when we purpose within ourselves, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to designing my life according to that word of God. Yes. I'm going to go to being led by the spirit of God. Amen. I'm going to go to asking God to have a real move in my life. That's right. When every person begins to do that, yeah. then you start seeing houses begin to be built up. Amen. Doesn't matter if it's one, doesn't matter if it's two, doesn't matter if it's three. It can be one. But that house is going to get built up. And then that house is going to declare, and thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you'll see other houses <laughs> begin to start building up. And buddy, I'm going to tell you something. When God builds your house, and when you build your house according to thus saith the Lord, I'm not talking about your natural home. I'm talking about this house. When we go to build that thing according to thus saith the Lord and go to getting it right, buddy, guess what? Hallelujah. Great is the house. Amen. Somebody say, great is the house. Great is the house. Lord, floods can try to prevail, but great is the house. Amen. The winds can try to blow. Everything can try to come against it, but great is my house. Amen. Or go talking to yourself. Hey, great is my house. 
I'm not overcome. I'm not defeated. I'm built up on the king. Hallelujah. I'm not built my own way. Hallelujah. I'm going to go to talking to that thing. I'm not built this thing with sticks and rubble and stubble. I've not done that. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. I feel the Lord. Glory to God. Oh, lift your hands up and magnify the Lord. Go to tell them, you know what, devil? Sticks and rubble I've not used. I'm not built with my own ability. I'm not built with what I think. I'm building on this word of God. That's what we're doing. We're building one stick after another, one stone after another. God's already laid the foundation, and we're building up on top of it. Hey, pray. Hallelujah. Our oh, great is this house. Hallelujah. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. Ain't no enemy of the world will prevail against it, sister. It will build according to the saying of the Lord. I wish you tell the devil, I'm building my house, and you can't destroy it. Let your bloods come if they will. My God, I raise up a standard. Hallelujah. I'm not building according to my own ability. I'm not building according to my own thought. I'm not building according to my own way. I'm not building according to my desire. I laid my desire down. I took up the desire to give it all to Jesus. Hallelujah. And if that's where you are, ain't a devil in hell big enough, you'll rise up and conquer all the powers of the enemy because you built your house right. The winds of this world won't affect it. The storms of this world won't affect You'll rise up with power and authority and dignity. Why? Because you built your house right. And God, I mean the God of heaven, will stand behind you. Nothing will prevail against you. <coughs> How have we built our house? How did we hold my house right? Amen. Amen. I believe we're doing that. Amen. This thing ain't, a, this thing ain't about uh, uh, trying to hurt people or tear people down. This thing's about building up a body. Hallelujah. The body is built up of individuals just like you. It don't matter if it's 20. It don't matter if it's 10. It don't matter if it's 3. I'll make you a promise. If two of you will get the house right, I believe y'all are not saying you're not. It's just, just a statement. If two people will get the house right, it'll house the presence of Almighty God. He said, for two or three are gathered together in my name. Hallelujah. It's more than a word. It's a way. It's a lifestyle. He said, there am I in the midst. And when he's in the midst, the floods of this world will not overtake you. It will not overcome for you. You'll walk right out smiling in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, you will. Yes. But you're building your house. Praise God. According with us, Sam. And if I build it that way, it don't matter what, what comes or goes. No matter what people think about it. No matter what, what the devil tries to do in my life. None of those things will matter. That's why we need his presence. Yes. I'm not talking about just in our services. Yes, we have to have his presence in our services. We got to have a touch of God in our services. We need him. Let me know I need him, baby. Lord, more than our breath and our natural body, we need Jesus. Amen. More than bread and our natural stomachs, we need Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we need Jesus. More than anything this life has, we need Jesus. Glory to God. I've got to have his presence. I've got Amen. to. I've got to have a spread. But in my own life, outside of the house of God, I need his presence Amen. to go with me. That's right. What was it that Moses said? They're about to. Uh, uh, God's aggravated with the children of Israel because they're backslidden and hard headed, hard hearted. Uh, sound like me half the time. Hard headed and hard hearted. I don't know. But God's telling Moses, look, this is a stiff-necked people. If I move in here in the midst of it, I'm going to consume them all. But I'm going to send an angel before you. And he's going to go in and he'll drive out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, all the ites. Well, we got a lot of ites back there. We still got a lot of ites now. We do. We got a lot of ites right now. Amen. 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 But that we're having to deal with. But God said, I'll send my angel. And Moses got to, I believe he got to thinking for a little bit. I believe he went back to Egypt. He's walking through a desert. And he seen a bush burning with fire. And out of that bush, he heard the voice of God. Yes. He said, take off your shoes, son. The ground you're standing on is holy. Yeah. You're going to go into Egypt. And we're, I'm going to defile all the gods of Egypt and overthrow Pharaoh. And you're going to bring my people out. And then I believe he went to the Red Sea in his mind. He said, you know, I thought we were done. I thought it was going to be over. 
there's a host behind us and the water in front of us. We had no way to escape. And all of a sudden, God told me to stand still. Hallelujah. I hear that right now. I want you to know that. But you stand still in your faith. You stand still and trust God. God will make a way. You hear me? God will make a way. You stand still in your faith and you trust Amen. God. God will make a way. Amen. And then he said the wind began to blow all night and created a dry path and they walked through on dry ground, not mud, not quicksand, dry ground. And then he seen how that they was in the wilderness with no food and all of a sudden manna began to fall. And then they were thirsty and water began to come out of a rock. And then they needed protein. And quail fell over and died and fell the, the, the camp was full of them. And they ate them, the Bible said, so they come out their nose. That's a lot of quail. Yes. They might have been little gluttons. Uh, yeah. And then how that God had brought them out of battle and battle and storm and storm. And Moses is sitting here because of the things that the people had done. It's pushed that God away. And now God says, I'm going to send an angel before you. And Moses said, Lord, you know what? There wasn't no angel that brought us through all this. He said, matter of fact, if your presence don't go with me, I'll just stay right here. Hallelujah. Amen. But I don't know about you. i got to have his presence. Amen. Amen. That's right. If your presence don't go, then I'll stay right here. Amen. Because it's your presence that separates us. From all the people of the land. You know why you're different? It's because of the presence of God in your life. You know why uh, 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 your, your ability doesn't matter? It's because when you've reached the end of your ability, you've got a presence in your life that'll carry you on through. That's why. That's why. Amen. Yeah. And so the most important thing in my life, right back to where we began, is the presence of God in my life. And how am I building a habitation that God can dwell in? Amen. Am I building it of my own accord? Am I building it my own way? Or am I building my house by the direction, just like the children of Israel did with Moses? They went by the direction that God gave them. Am I building my house, Brother Jack, according to the direction that God gave me to forgive those that, that hurt me, to bless them that, that used me and despitefully used me, amen, to, uh, to give and love and help and, and, and have forgiveness reign in my life, to come out from among the world and be separate, saith God, and touch not, handle not, taste not the unclean thing. How many know that's the Bible? Amen. Amen. That's how we're building our houses. Amen. Amen. And if we're building our houses that way, you can bet one thing. Buddy, that stick's stronger than any stick you get in this world. That board's stronger than any board you'll ever get because it'll have the hand of God holding it in place. Amen. Amen. That's how I want to build. Amen. Amen. Lord, I want to make my mind up today, Lord. I want to build according to your way, according to your design, and according to your plan. And when it's all good to go, Lord, I want to habitate. I want a habitation that you can dwell in. And in that place, you'll fight all of my enemies. You'll overcome every obstacle in my life. You'll make ways where there seem to be no way. When I come up to a great mountain, you'll bring it low. When I come to a great low place, you'll bring it high. But there's a value in having a relationship relationship with Jesus. Amen. There is a great value in having a real relationship with Almighty God. I mean a real one that repents, one that reads her Bible, one that prays and lives right and builds on this print. Amen. Builds according to this blueprint. It'll build a habitation, buddy, that the Almighty God of Heaven will inhabit. Yes, it will. And in that place, you'll find your victory and your greatest friend. That's why you're doing what you're doing. Don't grow weary of well-doing. That's what the Bible teaches. Don't grow weary. Sometimes we get weary in it because the devil bombards us with battles. And it takes our focus. You ever had a battle get your focus? Well, I sure have. Well, if you have or not, but I've had battles take my focus. And it takes my focus off of my direction. And in the midst of that, there's turmoil all around my mind. But I just keep fighting for a day or two. And God will bring me up and I get my direction. I can see where I'm headed. That's what the devil wants to do. He, he, he wants to take your vision and your focus. But he ain't letting him have mine. Hey Amen. How many say that this morning? Ain't letting the devil have my vision. But I know where I'm headed. Create the place that God can dwell and the presence of God can move around my life. I mean, that's where we're at. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for a real move of God. 
see. A real move of God. That's right. God yes. moves for his children. God loves his children. I want you to know that. A lot of people don't realize how much God really loves them, Sister Rose. God really loves his people. God really, I mean, every person here, God loves. I mean, God really loves you. He really loves you. Uh, all, matter of fact, all the people of this world, God really loves. He really loves. But what they don't understand is God has a way. He does. God's got a way. And to have a relationship, God doesn't go their way. They have to come God's way. That's right. That's what this world don't understand. That's right. And so if I want a greater relationship, then that means the same thing for me. I've got to go God's way. That's right. Yes. And live the way God wants me to live and do the things God wants me to do. Amen. But in that, I can be encouraged that but the God of heaven is real. Somebody say he's real. He's I mean, no, he's real. Amen. I mean, he's real. Yes. The God of heaven is real. And so I want a lifestyle. That the real God of heaven will live within me and walk with me Amen. and lead me and guide me. Yes. And then when the devil tries to rise up, he'll move him out of the way. Amen. He'll overcome him. Amen. And I'm more than a conqueror through that relationship, through Christ Jesus. Amen. I mean, that's the truth this morning. Amen. So I, I tell all our people this, and this, this is not to be a discouraging thing, it's to be very encouraging because I want you to know that when we do this, we've got great benefits that we're reaping. And we're all, all, all over this world, we're all, we're all uh, guilty of falling short. All of us all. I fall short. All our churches do. We all fall short. And so what we have to do is make sure that my focus, my vision, is on drawing nigh to Jesus. And if it's on drawing nigh to Jesus, but it'll work. Amen. It'll stand. That's right. It'll stand. Amen. And then I'll go to draw it close to God and pray that God moves in my, on my behalf and moves in my midst. How many know God? I told my church this morning, as a matter of fact, that I'd love to have a crowd. How many love to have a crowd? I'd love to have a crowd. But uh, I don't have a crowd. We, we ain't got a crowd. But I'd rather have the presence. Because at any minute, I mean at any minute, if you've got his presence, God can speak and change everything that's going on at any minute. That's right. But if we don't have the presence, he ain't going to speak. At any minute, whenever God says, all right, it's time to bring somebody in, God can deal with the heart and bring them right inside of my church house. That's right. And he'll lead them right in. All I'm going to do in the meantime is continue on and be faithful. Amen. That's all we can do, continue on and be faithful. And do the thing that God's called us to do. And if we'll do that, you know what will happen? In due season, God's going to fill my church up. In due season, God will fill your church up. Mm -hmm. In due season, it'll come just like it's supposed to. Yes. As long as, hallelujah, I'm building my house Boy. according to God's hallelujah. way. Amen. I mean, you know, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm building according to God's way. He can do the rest. Amen. But the minute I deviate from God's way, it can crumble and fall down. I don't want to go away from God. I want to stay God's way and not focus on nothing else. And when it's time, he'll go to moving. He'll go to healing. He'll go to touching. He'll go to delivering just because that's who he is. Amen. Everybody know that's who he is. And when he's in our midst, that's what's in our midst. So glory to God. The answer is I've got to have his presence in my life. I've got to have his presence in my church. And I've got to do whatever it takes to get that place. Amen. And that is go God's way. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a cheer today. Amen. Amen. I want to go God's way. Yes, I do. There are many ways you can go. But Jesus said there's a way. He said, I am the way. So there's only one. One way. Jesus said, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. <coughs> the true worship is the worship of the Father in spirit and in truth. Amen. In truth. It's this word of God. So if I want to know how to conduct my life, I can find in this Bible. I can listen to my pastor. I can listen to evangelists. I can listen to people that are really doing something and trying their hardest to lead people to Jesus. And I can take, you know, but then uh, uh, I told them, man, I'm telling my church a lot of stuff. <laughs> I told them again this morning. Maybe they aren't listening. They do. They're very good people. They love the church. I told them this morning, it doesn't do any good to go to church and just hear. It doesn't do no good. What we have to do is take the word that we hear 
and meditate on that word. Dwell on that word. Chew it like a cow chews its cud. Until, and ask God to help me to be a doer. Lord, let me be a doer of that word. Right. And not just a hearer. If I hear something in that, out of that preacher, uh, uh, and I've got my heart right with God, and I hear something that's in my life that's not right according to God, then I don't, I don't fight and struggle with it. I just say, Lord, forgive me of this thing and turn away from it. That's what real repentance is. Right. To repent is not to say, God, forgive me. That's what this whole conception in this world is. It's just to say, God, forgive me. But never have an action. Right. Real repentance has an action. Yeah. It means I was going this direction and doing this thing, but I've asked God to forgive me, and so now I've turned from that thing. Amen. And now I'm going another direction. Mm -hmm. And so to be successful in this walk with God, there has to be repentance. Not just once. I mean, I repented once and got right with God. Mm -hmm. But then... Many days since then, I've had things that I've found in my life that aren't pleasing to God. Well, what do I do? Well, I don't just kick them under the rug. If I do, they'll come back and bite me later. But what I do is I repent of them and ask God to forgive me. And I, and I turn from them. And what happens is, the more I'm on that road, the less Adam there is left. The more Adam begins to die. That's Somebody right. say, Adam's going to have to die. Adam's going to have to die. Yes. The more Adam begins to decrease, the Adamic nature in my life, he begins to increase, I mean decrease. And then the more I begin to take things in that word of God, the more my spiritual man begins to increase. And so there'll come a day, brother, that this thing's going to flip-flop. It might be a day that I was, there was more Adam than there was more spiritual man. But there's going to come a day that this thing's going to flip-flop. And you ain't going to have all that Adam left in you. I believe there's going to come a day, Jesus even said it. He said, I won't speak to you much from here on out because the tempter coming. But he had nothing in me. There was nothing left right. for the devil to tempt. I believe that day is coming for the house of God. I believe that. Amen. And there's going to come a day that we went God's way, laid down the Adamic nature, tried to take on the things of God and build our life according to that. I believe there's one day we'll step over a threshold and there won't be anything left. How many believe that? Right. Buddy, I believe it's coming. Amen. And so that's why we're doing the thing we're doing. We have purpose. We have direction. We have an understanding, and that's why we live the way that we live. It's not for nothing. It's not a shot in the dark. It's not nothing like that. We've got direction and purpose in our lives. We're building a habitation for the Most High God because we want His presence. Amen, amen, amen. We need God's presence. Amen. And that's how you get it. Amen. His way. Somebody say it's His way. It's His, it's way. his way. No matter yeah. what the world thinks, it's His way. Amen. Help me, O oh God, David said, created me, O oh God, a clean heart and renew. And this is David. This is David. People get mad when you preach stuff like this, like you preach now, you preach that. This is David talking. David done been in the, uh, had all kinds of battles and victory. He'd been in the presence of God. He'd seen all this stuff. And he said, created me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within. That is right. <laughs> and so I want to say the same thing day in and day out. Oh, created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within. Me. I ain't got it all figured out, but I want to find Him. Hallelujah! Somebody say, I want to find Jesus in all Jesus. that I do. I want to find Jesus. Yes. I want to build my house right, Amen. Amen. Because I want it to stand. The Bible says it will be tried with fire, but it'll be and there's a shaking coming. Let me know there'll be another shaking. It's going to shake everything that can be moved. But there's one thing that can't be moved, and that's the stone of Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you've built your house on that rock, it'll be a good house. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I've built mine on the rock, and his name is Jesus. Amen. I want to pray to you. I want to pray for you if you need prayer. And encourage you a little. I know there's always battles, there's always opposition, there's always all kinds of things. But buddy, uh, I know also God's on the move. God knows what he's doing. That's right. God's in control. God's in charge. And God make, makes ways where there seems to be no way. That's right. And I know that God, uh, no matter what we go through, no matter what our adversity is, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I will go with you all day, even into the ends of the world. God's still moving for you. But the devil might be fighting against your flesh. He might be fighting against your body, but God's still moving for you. Brother Jack, I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah.
Come up here. If you believe the Lord, I'm going to pray. I want y'all to come help me pray. If you believe the Lord this morning, I mean, really believe that God's in heaven. Jesus. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to anoint Brother Jackson this morning, God. God, heal his body. God, I rebuke this sickness, Jesus. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lord, God, in the name of Jesus. God, bring healing, Lord. Healing, healing in the name of Jesus. He's got to have a touch of God this morning, Lord. God, he's got to have a touch in his body, Lord, in his flesh, God. God, I rebuke. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God, strengthen this body, Lord. Help him, oh God. Help him, oh God. Help him and touch him, Lord. God, move for him right now, God. Move, Lord, this sickness, God. Lord, that tears his body down, God. This sickness, Lord. God, move around him and strengthen him. Encourage him, God. Lord, I pray, God, encourage his spirit. Lift him up this morning, God. Lord, lift him up, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let encouragement come off around his mind, God. Let this mind, God, I love you, God. God, we anoint him in the name of Jesus this morning. We anoint him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let him rise up with power, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Does anyone else need prayer this morning? No, sir, brother. What's wrong, brother? Jesus, please. Jesus, please. What is it, Jesus? Jesus, please. Please, please, please. God, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for this man. Lord, move in his body, Lord, in Jesus' name. Move in his body, in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you will heal him, Lord. God, I pray that you will heal him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, please, please help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. God, in the name of Jesus, give him strength, Lord. Give him strength and health, God. Lord, Lord, overcome this thing, God. Move for him, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, move for him, Lord. God, sometimes these things have a root, God. Lord, there's reasons we face sicknesses. There's reasons, God. And God, sometimes it's things that we're doing ourselves. Lord, I, help you. I pray you help him to rise up, God, and lay it down in the name of Jesus. Help us, God. Give him strength, Lord. In Jesus' name, this morning, give him strength, oh God. In Jesus' name, and touch his flesh, touch his body, God. In the holy name of Jesus. In the holy name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 God. I strengthen my sister, Lord. I strengthen my sister in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, she's broken, Jesus. She's broken, she's broken, she's broken. Lord Jesus, for more reasons than one, God, she's broken, Lord. God, give her strength, Lord. Let her know she's not standing alone. She's not alone. God, there's those that love her that are standing with her, God. Oh, give her peace, Lord. Peace, peace in Jesus' name. Peace in Jesus' name. Peace, oh God. Peace in the holy name of Jesus. Peace, Lord. God, I speak comfort to her heart, God. Oh, Jesus, 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 we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Oh, hold her hands up, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bless my sister, Lord. Bless her, Jesus. Bless her, Jesus.
prayed and uh, asked the Lord to be with us today in our life every day. And we pray that Brother Jonathan had the message of the hour. I believe he had the message of the hour, don't you? Amen. He's, he's come this way and, and helped us. And we, we just want to thank God for him and thank God for uh, you making the sacrifices you did. Oh, right. We know you've got the, uh, a big day today. Uh, you know, it says, except the Lord build a house, they did labor, labor in vain. That's right. That's right. And we know, hallelujah, it's like the, uh, the apostles said one day, or the disciples, they said, well, where else would we go? Because you're the one that's got the word He's the one. Amen. So that's we right. don't know where else to go. Nowhere. So if we'll just get right with God, oh, if we'll just get it. our heart clear before the Lord and our mind made up, uh, we're already born as a uh, again. We're a new creature in Christ Jesus. We're born of the Spirit, not of this world. We was born of Adam one time, but now we're born of the the seed of righteousness, right, the Lord amen. Jesus Christ. We're a spiritual man now. Amen. Let us walk after the Spirit that would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's right, amen. Hallelujah! And I thank God for that message today. I praise Him. Hallelujah! And. Uh, uh, I guess we'll just uh, close out. We don't have a, a, a birthday party next door mm -hmm. here for Brother Kemp uh, after the service. And welcome everybody to stay uh, and join with us a little bit. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll just go ahead. Uh, um, Mickey, would you come and... Uh, I'll pass the offer quickly. We'll take up the offer.